Ah, Mega Man X, an absolute gem and a must-have for all collectors of games on the legendary SNUS. This is one of the quintessential Mega Man franchise experiences that any self-respecting platformer enthusiast should give a go. Thanks to the Mega Man X Legacy Collection, available seemingly everywhere, that dream can easily be a reality. And then you have these people, these so-called renegade bootleg developers lurking in the shadows like they're trying to hide from a fart, who think they can make a great game and capitalize on the success of other great games like Mega Man X. Meet Sach Sa Sa Sachin? S Sakin? Uh... A notorious Taiwanese creator of unlicensed titles for the Famicom, Mega Drive, and Game Boy in the 1990s and early 2000s. These guys were pretty prolific, possibly best known for such classics as Master Chu and the Drunkard Who, or Little Red Hood. Yeah, definitely top shelf quality. As in, put them on the top shelf so no unsuspecting kids can possibly reach them. The one I'll be focusing on today is Rockman X. No, not even Rockman with a K, just Rockman. As if it was some mythological half-man, half-eagle creature that pecks the eyeballs out of Arabian soldiers or something. It was released at some time during the mid-90s for the Famicom and NES. A Game Boy Color version was also produced, but... Uh, do I really want to talk about that one? Some versions of Rockman X bear the label Thunder Blast Man or Rockman X Gold, but to me, it'll always be Rockman X. I played this one time when I was younger, and even much younger me knew that it was a steaming pile of kitty litter nuggets. It took me a long time to build up the courage to try it again. And I did. And, well... First thing you'll notice is that the title screen is directly ripped off of the original Rockman game for the Famicom. Except now, Mega Man has a boomerang on his forehead, and a little butt cape. Hello butt cape! But wait, there's actually a storyline to this! We go live to a reporter from NCN News relaying the cocktail party for the Centennially of Gadam City. What?! The big celebration takes place in the mayor's residence as everyone sips on Kool-Aid and dines on the finest... Uh, discarded Godzilla villain. Hey look! Twins! The mayor makes a toast to future prosperity in Gadam City. ba va valium When suddenly, a mysterious assailant smashes through the window with a loud, What's wrong? Oh no! Mayor's dog thur Miss Lucy, is kidnapped! <laughs> Don't... Without warning, that one guy from Aqua appears on all the screens in Gotham City, introducing himself as Havel, 35, single, and into soft music, long walks on the beach, and kidnapping powerful women. This is the worst eHarmony commercial I've ever seen. Well, almost. You haven't seen mine yet. He demands $20 billion per year to support their activities. Yeah, I really doubt any city has $20 billion to give to any cause, especially this fiery potato. Remember, Pao Long Tang is invincible, and I am the god! Haha, <laughs> what the bloody- Things are looking grim. A latest news says the Pao Long Tang- Who? What? Is now sabotaging the city center, and the situation seems to be serious. No kidding, Sherlock. You'll kindly notice the buildings and vehicles on fire, sir! I don't know if that's how they run things at your house, but in the rest of the city, we prefer our monuments and Volvos to not be caught aflame. And who does your hair? Electricity? The whole city is in panic condition. Even the police are not able to do anything to this. They can't do it, put their backs into it. Excuse me, but my grandson seems to have quite a fever. How high is the fever, ma'am? Oh, about 425. The media swarms the mayor for his take on the matter, and he can't help but stir up further frenzy. First, I request everyone to calm down. Obviously, we have no way to stop them. Yeah, that's gonna calm down the people, knowing they're helpless and hopeless. 
What we can do now is waiting for a miracle, or we will have no Chiachi but to accept their claims for the su- Are you saying you have 20 billion dollars to spend? Okay, then why are there still potholes in the street? Why is there still poverty? How come the best musical act you could book last 4th of July was Switchfoot? A bum. Gadam City needs a hero, and that hero is you, Rockman X and his bum! And so, our story begins. Rockman X is a pretty garbage game. Hey, remember what made Mega Man games so great? Toss them out the window into a crevasse below. That's right, I said it. A crevasse. First of all, your buster is gone and replaced with a puny boomerang. You can shoot one at a time and it's easy to miss your target. That's ridiculous. Just ask this scientician. Uh. Bullets are better than boomerangs. Okay, it's not the absolute worst, but it sure takes a lot of hits from this puny projectile to kill anything. Another rad feature Rockman X possesses is the ability to charge himself up and dash fly careen in whatever direction you're holding, which is a welcome feature. You can bypass enemies or get across treacherous pits this way, although you really can't stop or change trajectory until your momentum gives out and you flat out plummet. When you start the game, you get to choose your first destination. Will it be the city? The waterfall base? The striped balloon? Let's hit up the city first. Looks like the place has been overrun with cybernetic scorpions, bats, and tall, death-inducing Pez dispenser boy man thing. This ain't no city I want a vacation in. Is that beat? You're in the wrong game! The game's levels are divided into rounds, so thankfully you can beat a round and never have to go back. Oh yeah, that parallax scrolling. After a long voyage, you reach the, uh, well, we'll call it a robot master guarding the city. Bouncing Bwall Man. He's, well... His invincibility frames are impressively long. Whoa! Eventually, with much deliberation, participation, perspiration, and defecation, he'll go down for a catnap and you earn... Nothing but a lovely pic of the mayor's bougie daughter tied up in a cell with a look that says, You're gonna eat how many scones? Next up is the waterfall, and it's... Moist. Actually, I don't see any waterfalls yet, just the outside of Stinking Ham Palace. Boring. Rockman then takes to the sewers to deal with vermin- Oh, now he's dead. Game over. Eventually, Rockman does see a waterfall, and it's so beautiful. Our eyes are not worthy. After mucking about, you face off against the evil Bill McShootshoot and his weird gum addiction. It bothers me how short his vulnerability period is. Most of the time, he takes no damage whatsoever. Kill him off and we get a close-up of that potato guy. Moving right along, we head out to the blimp launching pad. Is this how you kill a plump alligator dude? The blimp is relatively uneventful, unless you want to waste a few hours fighting this mechanical multi-cannon malarkey right here. This battle is as slow as trying to build a condominium out of toothpicks. Ugh, why is this so slow? In the time it took me to beat this boss, I met a wonderful partner, we got engaged, fought over whether we would have children or cats, and then broke up when I made the obvious choice. After that mess, we resume our adventures inside a borked calculator, where he must take a leap of faith! Eh, that didn't go well. Going the other way will lead to better things, right? Eh, that didn't go well. With constant flights upward in a really annoying vertical corridor, Rockman X does some light shopping, as one can do right before a boss, and then goes face to face with Bonaroni, the forgotten Ninja Turtle. At this point I'm thinking, this game's pretty dull and insanely difficult. I start to question my life choices. Why am I playing video games when I could be out enjoying the wilderness, or sipping a tequila sunrise on the beach, or ziplining across a pit of grizzly bears or something? But no. Here I am, playing donkey excrement like this. Uh... Once the boss is defeated, we get another still of the captured princess. Wait, what's with that ear? Is that Arthur? And then... Whoa! Motorboykin! 
That's right, Rockman gets to tackle a vehicle level, and it's an exceptional challenge given the main fact that you can only shoot forward, but enemies regularly come from behind as well. The bike can charge up to fire off a slightly more spectacular blast, but I still felt underpowered to tackle the rear endings I was receiving. There's a strange possessed turtle shell boss at the end, which, I mean, it isn't awful, but it made baby Rockman cry. Oh, what's this? A motorcycle bonus level? Nice. Cue the detailed still where Rockman uh, is heading towards something smoking, and... Ooh, we're back to the city! Hooray! Look at that animated grass! That is some impeccable gazon right there. We head through some stanky cave, and an area I can only describe as a green warehouse. If it's exciting environs you're after, look elsewhere because Sakin or S Sachin lost their creative spark after that abysmal introduction sequence. This place is filled with turdly spikes scattered about like thumbtacks in a... Uh, a, th a thumbtack factory after an earthquake. With the level of excitement only achieved by putting disgruntled squirrels in your underpants, I bought all sorts of rad upgrades, and then took on Flame Boots Franklin, which took about 17 days. 17 days later. Hoorah, another cave level. How innovative. What do they think of next? A third cave level, perhaps? Ah, but this one has a unique feature, being able to ride in minecarts. How well does it actually play, though? Is it as fun as in Donkey Kong Country? But completing this gauntlet of spelunking leads to... Oh, oh gee, another cave level. Marvelous. What epic design. Hmm. And now, a public service announcement. Don't press on the shopkeeper's breasts. She'll take your money. We now return to your regularly scheduled program. We've arrived at the final boss, Havel, who is holding the mayor's dog Thur hostage. Although there's an irritating eyeball crab demon skulking about, it's really the potato face in the control booth you're after. Smash that window enough times and he'll come crashing down like a drunkard on a glass table. Hooray! Gatham City is safe! And Rockman X flies off with his new lady in hand. Now I am the hero of Gatham City! Woo woo! The news outlets are buzzing with the... Uh, a big news. For having the Thunder Blast Man's rescue, Gatham City is safe now. And there will be no more attack from the Pao Lung Tang. Only a little mild photobombing. Is that a tongue in the background? The townsfolk honor Almighty oh, Rockman X by molding a statue. Mold? It'll need a cleaning. They look at my heroic... Uh, bearing. Okay. And proclaim me as the new patron saint of the city. I guess I deserve that for putting up with the game. The end. Cue the Thunder Blast Man credits. Well, this was dismal to play. The controls were... Uh, mildly acceptable, but the actual mechanics stunk like old bacon. I will give more props to the presentation. Despite the amusing English found in the intro and outro, the game doesn't look half bad. And the music isn't constantly horrible, although it does feel like it's all over the place thematically. It's almost as if it was shat from a music randomizer. Just give this a listen. And yet, occasionally it does go out of its way to drill your eardrums a little. Oh, just how long do you think you could listen to this cluster migraine in sound form? Oh. Rockman X will never be as great as Mega Man X, no matter how hard he strives to emulate that futuristic phenomenon. Let's keep him in the back of our minds and at the bottom of our hearts. Or just forget him altogether and play something good. Oh wait. Oh. I forgot about that Game Boy Color version. Nuts! Well, right then. We better see if that's any better. Uh, epilepsy warning coming. Y yep. Surprisingly, it actually is better. Thunder Blast Man on Game Boy Color is much more like a classic Mega Man title. He doesn't fly, he doesn't throw weird boomerangs, no, he just runs around and shoots everything. I did notice that health drops are amazingly frequent, and pits and spikes are, well, equally frequent. All in all, far more rad than the Famicom counterparts. Uh huh. Thank you for watching. 
Now, I openly admit, I have not posted a lot in a while, but maybe, just maybe, your like and your subscription to this channel just may be the impetus that I need to get back into the game. So you know what? Go, go, go ahead and do it. And I'll appreciate it. Thank you.